It's the Thursday before the 24 hours of Le Mans and we've just left London, headed for the track and a six hour drive. But luckily, we're in a Bentley, but not any Bentley, a Continental GT Le Mans edition. One of 48, all in celebration of the 10th anniversary of Bentley's win at the race with the Speed 8. Joining us for the journey is Guy Smith, one of the drivers who won Le Mans with the Speed 8 in 2003, as well as Le Mans legend Derek Bell. We took the time to interview both of them on the 45 minute journey crossing the English Channel. Yeah, I, I think we just want to talk about, you know, we're on our way to Le Mans. You know, we've got you know, you know, generations of experience, and you've, you've won it for Bentley back in 2003, 2003. Yes, 2003. Yep, yep. And, and we look at what Le Mans has become over the years. What are your thoughts in terms of, you know, technology just keeps advancing, keeps advancing. Is it more about the drivers or more about the technology at this point? Well, I think it's, I think it's uh, interesting to see the way it's gone with uh, now with Audi and, uh, and, and this, this weekend with Toyota. Um, you know, you see the, the technology that they're bringing in, obviously Audi with the, the Quattro four-wheel drive and, and Toyota with their hybrid system. Um, you know, really these cars are state-of-the-art, you know, almost further advanced than a Formula One car, um, which is fantastic to see. Um, but uh, there is the argument that it potentially is uh, taken away from some of the racing. Um, you know, obviously when Derek was racing, we, we were chatting earlier on today about you know, that there was maybe up to sort of uh, 10, 15 Porsches on the grid, all with a chance of being able to win the race. And uh, I think from a, from a pure racing point of view, from a fan's perspective, uh, that's really what they like to see. As much as the technology is fantastic to, 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 to see uh, been showcased, it, you know, I think we're all racers at heart and uh, seeing the cars out there battling is, uh, is what really makes it enjoyable. Well, it's, it's, it kind of loses its entertainment value. It's more about the, the manufacturer's front group side. I mean, I've always said since day one, motor racing is about entertaining the fans. Without them, there wouldn't really be racing. I mean, Bernie Eccleston might argue and say, well, there's television, but it's the fans that watch TV too. And I think there has to be something that you can't expect the fans sitting at home, at home particularly, but even at the racetrack, to try and understand the rules. And I mean, they see, you know, five or six great cars, technology, he said it all, and I needn't say anymore, is outstanding what they're doing. But the problem is, that as an entrant of a car trying to get sponsorship like Pescarolo, he goes to get sponsorship and they say, well, of course, we'll finish. Where are we going to finish? One, two, three, something like that. He says, no, we'll be behind the Audis and the Toyotas. I mean, that's how we can hope. he'll only hope to be there without his car breaking down as well. And he's never going to win. Now, is a sponsor really going to be interested in that? Is the fan interested in coming to watch? They know it's wonderful technology, and I have to say this all-wheel drive system, when you think of taking it to a 24-hour race, we've all had it on the road in, in Audis for 25 years and the Bentleys for the last 10, 12 years. I mean, it's incredible technology. And when you think there's never a reliability problem with it, they're going to do a 24-hour race running at 230 miles an hour. I mean, it, it's very ballsy, gutsy, yeah. and they will do it because their technology, they're so capable. But I think it's, they're putting themselves in a higher echelon. It's almost like there should be a class for them and let the others go about it and really win the race. Because at Plus, I personally don't think that I want to go and hear a car hissing as it goes by with no noise. To me, racing's about noise. Three years ago, I went and took Sebastian out onto the track. My son, yeah. who was then 11, I took him out the back in the, even, in the night. And to be honest, the only car you knew was coming was the Aston. So amazing. the others went to, and oh, there they went, Sebastian, that was the uh, Peugeot, yeah. which made more noise than the Audi, and then suddenly, wah, bah, 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 down the gears and accelerating out, and yeah. I went, that was all I watched, and when I yeah. came back to watch the last three hours, again, the only car that got my attention was the Aston, yeah. Yeah. and I'm sure Audi never thought of that, because they, sure. they didn't look at it that way, they look at it technology-wise. Sure. Anyway, I'm not criticizing, I'm just saying. Well, you, well, you know, the thing about the technology at this point is that the technology is proven you know, long before they even attempt to bring it to Le Mans. You know, they're, they're working on stuff at this point that mm. they're not ready to put into the Le Mans car because there's a risk when, mm. when you were racing back in the day, you just had parts slapped on at the last minute. And it was your job to test them and prove yeah. it. Mm. Well, that was the thing. I mean, you know, again, Guy can talk about his experience with Bentley and how they developed the car and the stuff they did on the rolling, on the, you know, the dynamometer, the stuff they did in the wind tunnel. And I mean, I remember so vivid. I mean, I did it 26 times starting back in 1980. And I remember you sort of turn up and you drive through that tunnel up into the Place de la Republique, you know, and you come up there in that very austere cathedral and you're sort of going, 
bloody hell, I'm back. You know, what are we going to be doing down the Bulls Arm Straight this year? Remember, there were no chicanes then. And you were, it was the only track in the world that ever gave you that sort of tremble yes. in your stomach. Yeah. Because you were driving through into the unknown two days later, but there you were arriving and there was all this hubbub. And you suddenly saw you, the car. Do you still get that now when you go? When you, like, when you go today, do you still feel? Oh, yes, very much so. Yeah, 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 yeah you, you can't it, fail. You? Yeah. But you would, particularly, yeah, no, the you know, you could well drive. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. You can't fail. Yeah. I think, I think um, uh, sorry to interrupt, but no, you, no, you, no. You, have, you have that feeling where, especially as a driver, and, and, and it's interesting, it never goes away, that you get there and you feel the buzz, you hear the helicopters and you you hear the, the tannoy and the, 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 fr the French uh, it's like uh, commentator. Back, it? yeah, and, it's and, like and going back to the EU, did and, and, and you can feel it, you can feel it in, the, in your stomach. Mm -hmm. And there's probably, there's not many racetracks. I mean, obviously when you go to a racetrack, you feel some anticipation, some nerves. Um, but it's probably a bit like, I can imagine maybe like the Monaco Grand Prix or Indy or, or the Super Bowl or something where you go there and just the atmosphere, you can feel it building. And, and throughout the week, when you're there for a full week, you know, it starts off. I, mean, I remember my first ever time at Le Mans racing was in 2000 and I got there and I was like yeah I see this quite a big race didn't really think too much of it and by Wednesday more and more people were arriving Thursday more again Friday I couldn't believe you know just the, just the buzz that, and, yeah. and I could really feel it you know yeah. not getting to me in a negative way but I could really I felt something that I'd not really felt before and it, you know it, it's replicated every time I go back to Le Mans um, it's replicated so that's that's what Le Mans you know, brings it, it gives you that that excitement, that buzz, and uh, yeah. I think the fans can feel that too. You know, maybe yeah. in a slightly different way, they relate to it in a different way, but they can feel it too. And I think that's you know, you go there and it, yeah. it makes it so special. Well, have either of you raced the 24 hours in Evergreen? Yeah. Oh no, I, been there? I I did it uh, two years ago, oh, right. and and it's um it's a kind of a similar thing. I yeah. mean, it's kind of um I, I think because as a driver, there's that element of risk. Danger. Nürburgring gives you that same kind of feeling, it does, yeah. and it's um, a little bit of anxiousness. But and it's also having respect. I mean, imagine it's yeah. like like Indy. I mean, every time you get in the car at Le Mans, I mean, we, we can maybe get blasé. You could be maybe something like Lime Rock, and you get in the car, and you know, you know motor racing is dangerous. But you get in, and you're a little bit blasé, and you drive. But at Le Mans, every time you get in the car, or you're about to get in the car, you really have to have the respect for the car, the surroundings, because you can't get into the into the car you know, without being in the right frame of mind. And I think uh, Nürburgring is a similar kind of place because it's the sort of place that will bite you in a hurry. Yeah. And because it commands so much respect, you know, as a driver, you've got to give it the respect back. Um, and I think that's what makes it so special. But I, but I think he's, he's got on it, absolutely. One more thing is that it's 90 years old. Yeah. Or 88 years old, whenever you were doing it, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. And that catches up with you because there's so much history. Yeah. And yeah. everywhere you go, Le Mans is talked about you know it is the world's greatest race you don't appreciate it like you said I mean yes. I went there in 1970 I'm going out I had no ambition really to do Le Mans yeah yeah but I did because I was asked often to drive there and uh, you know you sort of go there and you, as you say you sort of look around and you go my goodness this is really rather spectacular yeah. and then of course you start to hear about the history and people like yourselves ask questions and yeah I don't always know the answers any more than you have done in the past and you sort of find out what, you know, what are oh, that crash in 55? Yeah. You go into yeah. all, and all this stuff comes up yeah. and then you start to take an interest in it and every time you look in a, at a motor book shop, there's books about Le Mans. Sure. I mean, everybody writes sure. a book about Le Mans. Yeah. And, and, and the same for me when I joined Bentley, it was the same time, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, almost coincided with my first time at Le Mans. So I then start to look back at the history of, of Le Mans and then the Bentley boys and suddenly you realize, actually, this it's really, really interesting regardless of the Bentley connection, but these, these guys were just, just, just heroes and, and they, they were uh, very instrumental in making Le Mans what it is today. And you know, to have some small connection to that you know, via Bentley and, 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 and uh, working with them is, is fantastic to, uh, to feel that you've got in some little way some part of history. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, what, you know, what a fantastic experience. As drivers, you know, from 2003 and you know, back do you feel it's really pushing you more so than any other race? Are you, are you, more, are you flat out more so than anywhere else? Or no. is it more about managing your no. pace the and managing the car? To me, the whole thing is exactly what we said. It's the atmosphere of Le Mans. Mm -hmm. It's the one race. You are the, you are the icing on the cake. Yeah. And as Jack Eakes once said to me, he wrote me a letter and he said, Derek, to win this race, we have to have the best designers, the best engineers, the best mechanics, the best tires, and then the best drivers with the best of luck. And if any of those components aren't there, you're going to ask him, you don't get it. I mean, mm. when you won mm. 
the other so car had one more puncture than they yeah. did. Yeah. Or more, probably See, more, but I mean, that sort of thing. What? As a driver, as an individual, you can't win Le Mans, but you certainly lose Le Mans. Yeah. You know, so it, and it, it's all about, as Derek said, the number eight car was very, very great drivers, they had a great team, every bit as strong as we were, but on the day, we had that little bit more luck than they did. And that was the difference between winning and losing. And, and it's not something that you can really engineer. It's, it's a lot of it is, you, you hope that the, the chemistry comes together and you hope that weekend everything goes well. But you know, a lot of the time it's out of your control. But I think a lot of it is just preparation and planning. And you know, this for us is a Super Bowl. This, this is the one that you, yeah. you want to do well. As a driver and as a, as, a, as a team and as a manufacturer, this is the one that you want to win. And um, you know, the, the pressure is on, but uh, you know, to, 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 to actually, to achieve that, I mean, to finish this race is a huge achievement. And um, I mean, to put it in perspective, you know, uh, the Le Mans car this weekend, if it finishes the race, will will the mileage that it will do is is, is similar, if not greater, than what a Grand Prix car will do all season long. Yeah. So it puts in perspective what the car is actually going through itself. It's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it's I mean that you know it's real engineering, and, yeah. and uh, so th there's lots of things like that that, that are very interesting uh, about Le Mans. But yeah, I mean. And, um, the fact is, it's, I compare it, like he said, the Super Bowl, but I think you could say the Olympics. It happens every four years. Yeah. And you have this amazing base of team that are building a car. And like when he won, yeah. it took three years. And that is often the way it's won by the yeah. three years. But you build this amazing platform of people. And then when it comes to that one weekend, we, as I said, are on the pinnacle of it. But there's so much has gone into it. And if you make a mistake, so you, but you don't make mistakes because you, and like you say, it's just that you're, you've been preparing for it for so long. Yes. And everybody's prepared for it. There's so much in it that when you get there, there's something extra that you manage to put out that yeah. you don't put out at Lime Rock yeah. or Silverstone. Because yeah. it's, oh, yeah. Silverstone next week? Yeah. This yeah. thing you've been working at as a driver since Christmas or New Year, yeah. which is when I used to start really bothering to get in shape. Yeah. The team had been doing it since the day the last Le Mans stopped. Mm -hmm. So they're working up to it. And it really is... It's amazing. I mean, it, it, it's the only race that everybody puts everything in. I mean, the Grand Prix is every two weeks. I'm not saying they don't put everything into it. But it must get a bit dulled sometime sure. when it gets to race 16 and sure. you're not leading the bloody championship. Sure. And for our case, we have to be at the peak. Everybody has to be at the peak for the whole 24 hours. And there's nothing worse. There's nothing worse. Um, there's nothing worse than actually sort of going in the race and then having something stupid yeah. like some bloke pushes you off. Yeah. I mean I've never been upset with my teammate because for some reason we're always at such a pitch yeah. that you don't make mistakes. No. Yeah. And if you and you would know because if you made mistakes yeah. you wouldn't be with him. Yeah. Because you you have I, the best drivers in the world. I with think you, you get to you get to a point where you you, you actually analyze the, the weekend and the pressure that goes into it. You, 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 you it would freak you out because you think of all the work that's gone into it. But I think you elevate as, as, as in, in, your, in yourself. You, you, go, talking, to, you go to another there. level. <laughs> you go to another. Hi there, how are you? Hi. You go to another level because you, the, the whole the pressure around you. But you just you almost go beyond the nerves and beyond the stress, and you almost go to that next level where you just you, you just got to focus on on the performance. If you focus on the result, you can't change the result, but you can affect the performance. Focus on the performance, and the result will come. And I think that's what you got to try and do on the weekend. Just just stay focused on the job. You, you've been training all year to do it and that's what you've got to try and do but it's uh, I, but I, and he, I don't think that you could do that every week yeah it's too much what goes thank into you, it thank I think you it, yeah, you have a great weekend thank man you. okay I just thank think you. it's too much for you to, to be able to put that effort into every uh, every two weeks the same yeah. Yeah. performance and effort you, you know it's it's such a mountain to climb and when you're right there at the top with that chance of reaching the top then you know yeah. that's when we go to do the race and it's such a long week as well because you normally get there the Saturday, Sunday before the race. It's weeks now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, literally you're there, and and, and, and you, you you have the scrutiny and all the technical, the, the signing on. Then you have you know meetings, and then you have the night practice, which goes goes until midnight on on obviously on the Wednesday and Thursday. Um, plus everything else, the media stuff that goes around. So actually, a lot of time, as you I think as you get more experience, so I might, I might be wrong, Derek, but you learn to conserve your energy so that you actually it's very easy as, as a youngster to go there and be running around doing a million things and you get to the weekend and you're, you're exhausted oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, you've got to I, I, I feel sorry for them currently well he's here with us having yeah, 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 a couple of beers time, but yeah. generally speaking I see them the way they are and I mean my career finished when he got to this pitch mm. but I mean we used to we used to have a free day on Friday mm. and so 
you know, every night we'd been up till one in the morning, got to our various hotels, went to bed, and we had maybe had food yeah. at the hotel. They put out soup for you and stuff. Went to bed. You get up at nine, ten o'clock because you didn't have to be because your clock was changing. You didn't have to be at the track yeah. until two o'clock. Yeah. And you get to the track. They'd done their job, and your job is to drive the car. Yes. Nowadays, I heard Tom Christensen last year saying. You know, we're at this meeting and that meeting and sponsors and all this bullshit. Yeah. You know, to yeah. me, the driver should be left alone. Yeah. We'll see you for practice, qualifying, and we'll see you race morning. For, and they have a warm up. Now we didn't have a warm up on Saturday. We'd have Friday off. We play tennis in the yeah. morning. Come yeah. to see the team at midday. Have a brief meeting, and then the afternoon probably have lunch with our friends out in the middle of the forest. I mean, I know I'm seeing like a gentleman racer, but this is professional. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is the way we built up to it, and then. In the afternoon, you go back to probably go through the park, have a walk, and then in the evening, you know, have a dinner at about 7:30 at the hotel. It was tranquil. Go to bed and sleep for hopefully 10 hours. Yeah. And in the morning, you get up, cruise to the track mid-morning, yeah. And then you know you'd meet the pre whatever you were doing yeah. after midday. Well, the race started at four o'clock. Yeah. But these blokes, they're yeah. there at bloody warm up in the yeah. morning, and they must be physic mentally, physically exhausted. It's hot. Everywhere you go, there's somebody with a camera or a piece of paper. So what do you hide in a motorhome with the air conditioning? Yeah. I, mean, I think it's I awful. remember in 2003, oh, we had the driver's parade and we got back about 9, 9.30 and still not eating any dinner. And literally, we had, we had a meeting with guests and I'm sat there meeting with guests trying to just eat some food. Yeah. This is like 10 o'clock. Yeah. So you do all this preparation and people, you know, you say, okay, Lamont, you've got to be full, got to be fit. Gotta, and, and, and you actually find it. You know, you're trying to grab oh, food yeah. when you can, and it all oh, kind yeah. of goes out the window. So you, you've got to really have really pretty good mind management. And, to mind, uh, it, was, it was really was in the mind. So yeah. If I don't, if I didn't get it, it's even a bit like last night. I'd had a really hectic week. Yeah. There was a point that I knew we were getting up at seven. Yeah. And I thought I've got to try and get eight hours. Yeah. If I don't get eight hours, yeah, no good. I might only sleep for seven of them, but I really want to. Yeah. I can't go to bed at midnight and have five yeah. hours day yeah. after day yeah. after day. Yeah. Yeah, and it's the same up. for the race. And to me. The mechanics do their job, the engineers are doing their job, and the drivers are there to drive and to win that race. And they can't win if they're eating bloody pasta at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, and, yeah. and not only that, but you're going, oh, bloody hell, I've got to get up at 7 because warm up's at 9. Yeah. I, I just think that's wrong. We haven't yeah. discussed that no, because it's you true. wouldn't know what we used to do. No. But we would get there, and it would be like with X and I, which was the early part of it. I mean, we'd say, or who, Jackie would say he would do the start, so he would do warm up. I wouldn't even have to go for warm up. Mm. You know, so I cruise in, and I didn't get in the car till six o'clock at well, four o'clock start after two hours. So I could yeah. actually turn up at ten yeah. to six. Yeah, but yeah. I did. Yeah. You know, sure, sure. But there was there was the stress was absolutely negligible, and I see these guys now, and I'm going, I, I actually wouldn't want to do it for that reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it's just more pressure, and and, and no, no, it's not more pressure because obviously the pressure to perform is always the same. I mean, mm. you know, Derek was, you know, obviously with Porsche, you know, biggest manufacturer. Yeah. Uh, you know, sunny at, at the time, and uh, it's just—I think it's just different. I think just the demands, the demands are different. But, um, but you know, it's Le Mans for you. That's, that's, yeah. so, yeah. that's so why you get paid so much money for. <laughs> I don't want to take too much of your time, but I got one Sorry. final question about um, you know the fascination of the automobile with our culture. Just hundred thousand people from the UK driving down to Le yeah. people from the States, people from Asia that fly oh, yeah. to this race. You know, what's what's our fascination? What do you think our fascination is with the automobile? And, and, Competition as a whole in, in a 24-hour race it well, kind of seems foolish when you really think about it. But what are your thoughts? To if you start, we well, you, if you start with a man, every man would love to race cars. Every man loves, within reason. I wouldn't know what the percentage, but nearly every man you ever meet, lovely car, like yep. that, yep. like that. Yep. And obviously, for some of them, they can afford to buy it and that sort of thing. So that's one thing. But then others, others cannot, and they strive to buy it. I mean, I met people yesterday at the event, and they said, one day, I'd like to have a car like that, looking at the Bentley, you know. And, I, and he said that it was out of, my, out of my, I said, it isn't, you're 22. There's plenty of time, mm. you know. There's a guy in the army, actually. Mm. And um, I said, it doesn't matter, you know, you, something will happen, and sure. you might strive, and sure. you'll be able to get it. And, and people, they see beautiful cars, they see them in the street. And uh, I think that every person wants to have one, yeah. really, and they want to have it a little bit better, right? Some people, like bank managers, might not. And, and I think with Le Mans, it, it's it's um, a lot of the time it, it's boys, it's guys, you know, whether it be you know young 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 guys in the twenties or older guys that have you know maybe been going to Le Mans for years and years, and then they take their sons and friends, and it's uh, you know it's like a kind of a boys' weekend, you know. It's 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 oh, it's, yes. it's, it's as, you know, maybe not everybody there are race fans, but mm. they they all share the passion for cars and. 
with, with the race, they can dip in and out of it and watch the start, and maybe watch the middle and watch it. And there's so much going on. And I just think it's got, it's got something for everybody. And I think um, that's why people come back year after year and uh, you know, really enjoy it. But why, why endurance racing? You know, you, you used to race in Formula One Grand Prix, and those are skirt races. Yeah, so sure. Why endurance racing? What is the aspect? What is the fascination? Like, well, I think the two, I mean, Formula One is really about the technology of a Grand Prix car and the best drivers in the world doing it. Mm. Now, believe me, if there were 16 Porsches out there or 16 mm. Bentleys out mm. there or 16 Audis, Half of those cars will be driven by Formula One drivers, mm. but they can't because there aren't any cars for them to drive. Yeah. Um, I'm not, you, know, you could well say, well, they wouldn't all be released from their contract. Yeah. But there's probably, if when you went to sign your major contract, there's probably, if, yeah. you, if you were Lewis Ham Hamilton, you could probably say, do you know, the one dream I have is of doing Le Mans. Yeah. And they would let him do it. I mean, there's no hardship to it. Yeah. Tw it's very physical. It's great for the brain. Yeah. Remember when Mike Hale did, he went, bloody hell, this is hard. You yeah. know, he'd done biking and obviously did Formula One, but he couldn't believe just how testing a race, our sort of racing is. And it is endurance, but it's also, it's the precision, it's the mental approach, which we've talked yeah. about, how yeah. you look at it mentally, how you handle it, how you don't hit other people, uh, how you don't go off the road. I think with sports car racing as well, you know, particularly like Le Mans, you've got brands like Bentley, you've got Porsche, there's Ferrari, Aston Martin. Uh, you know, these are all the cars that, that people can drive on the road. They're all great brands. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a slightly different kind of, uh, slightly different culture. You find mm. that sports car racing people, you know, Le Mans fans particularly, are really die-hard Le Mans fans. I mean, they may not have no interest in Formula One, but they've just, it's, it's a kind of like a cult following almost. Yeah. And so it's a, different, it's a different type of person, but, you know, they're, they're die-hards and they, they, they come for year, year after yeah, year yeah. after year oh, and yeah. they, they get this, they get their, it's a little bit like Sebring is, is a similar kind of thing in the Very States. Much, yeah. You know, they come and they get their, um, you know, lay, lay out the pitch and they, yeah. they, some of them get dressed up in the, yeah. you know, t tuxedos and they do or dinner cow and, suits, or cows, or whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah. it may be and, and, and they make a, they make yes. a, they make yeah. a, a, a trip of it and, yeah. uh, you know, I'm looking forward to as a driver uh, seeing it from the other side because obviously when you're racing you, you you see the pits and your garage you don't really see much of Le Mans so I'm looking forward this weekend to actually being able to walk around and see all the kind of crazy stuff that goes on on the infield that I've never seen before and appreciate Le Mans from a different different uh, vantage point.